welcome back to Noah's Window. Uh, we're still in Acts chapter 4, and there's so many exciting things happening here. Uh, we talked about Peter and John going to the temple at, uh, during evening prayers, and there's this great miracle of the lame man healed, and then they get thrown into jail. And where we left off yesterday, I think, is when the authorities, really fearing a riot, they went ahead and after they threatened them thoroughly, they let them go. And so we're going to pick up there in verse 23 what happens next. So in verse 23 it says, As soon as they were free, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Wow. It's just such a wonderful story. I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit left some of these sermons, but also these prayers. One of the things we'll find in the book of Acts is several prayers that God captures for us and gives us. Um, it is interesting to me that instead of going into a protest march or instead of going into uh, a huddle to talk about strategies for dealing <laughs> with the high priest and, mm -hmm. and all those people, they went to prayer and they just started praying. But their prayer is not exactly what we would think it would be, I, I guess, because they first start giving glory to God. They, they remind God, not that he needs reminding, but they remind God that he's creator, that he's sovereign, that he worship. rules. It is a form of worship, mm -hmm. it, it very, very much is. And they also quote the second psalm, you know, which is one of my favorite psalms. It's a messianic psalm there. Um, and they say, God, this is no surprise to us because your word said this kind of thing was going to happen. But what really amazes me, Mary Alice, is that I'm almost expecting them to say, oh, God, stop the persecution. Yes. You know, please stop this persecution. But instead of that, they really ask primarily for two things. They say, um, Keep doing miracles, mm. if you will. Keep 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 changing people's lives and give us boldness. Mm. You know, make us bold. He, he, they don't say stop the persecution. They say mm. give us boldness. One more place, and I love what you read here in um, the last verse of the chapter. You know, it says after this prayer, the meeting place shook. Mm. So, in effect. God demonstrated that his power was there in response to their prayer and his power is still there in response to prayer. We don't need the room to shake. I think that was for their confidence. I think that was for, you know, for, for them to know that going through this difficult thing that they had, that God was at work and all of that. I love that. And, and you know, bringing that into modern day, I, I keep thinking about we can become, by we I mean Christians in general in, in the United States and in the world, can become discouraged and, and maybe our prayer can be sometimes overthrow this, overthrow these people, mm -hmm. change the government, change the... And I love that it wasn't their prayer. Yeah. It was, uh, please continue to work, like you said, right. and give us boldness. I feel like we need that. Oh, we, we need that today. Much, we so, so much need that. You know, uh, this uh, goes so well, closely hand in hand to what I preached several weeks ago, reasons versus purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, the disciples here, they don't get wrapped up in the reasons why Caiaphas is the way he is and Annas is the way he is and why do these crazy people do crazy things? They say, well, the Bible said that was going to happen. They're not wrapped up in reasons. They're wrapped up in purpose. Yes. They know God's doing something here. Uh, they know that it, their prayers are not going to clean up a broken world. Mm. Uh, they know it's still a mess. It's always going to be a mess. I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't pray for God to work and move in people's lives and situations. But they're not wrapped up in what's the reason? Why did Caiaphas do this to mm. us? Why were we arrested without being charged and all that? They don't get wrapped up in reasons. They're totally immersed in God's purpose here. Yes, and I think that's a recurring thing too. 
And Jesus told them before he went to heaven, you know, you're going to be called before rulers. You're going to be called in, in places that uh, you're going to be challenged. But that's your opportunity. That's your opportunity to preach the gospel. And that is true today as well. Um, when, when we have opportunity, maybe due to uh, some form of persecution or, or challenges that we're faced with, we can use that opportunity and let God work through us. I think that's an exciting challenge to take to heart. You know, for homework today, uh, you might go back and read the second psalm. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, it is so interesting because it, it's, it, it's so similar to what I talked about with John 9 and reasons for its purpose. Because if you look at the question, uh, why do the nations get angry? Why do the heathen rage is the Old Testament quote from Psalms. Why do they waste their time with feudal plans? The Bible never answers that question. The Bible just says what they need to do to respond to God. And to me, what you're saying about the times that you and I live in today, we need that. I mean, there isn't going to be a perfect world. I want America to be, I want it to be blessed. Uh, I want America to turn back to God. I want to see God move. I want to see homes put back together. I want to see children's lives changed. I really do believe that through the power of the gospel that happens. But the, I just know this, America is not the kingdom. And yes. You know, the kingdom will only come when Jesus rules and reigns on the earth. And then we'll see we'll see the earth done right, the world done right. Yes, and it goes back to the passage we're reading, the power of prayer. So would you pray for us today? Yes, let's pray. Oh, Father, we're so thankful for the privilege of coming before you. We're so thankful that not only you have invited us to uh, bring our petitions to you, but that you promised to hear our prayers. And what a huge blessing and miracle that is. And I just thank you for the privilege of, of talking to you and sharing our concerns with you. And Father, as we live through these days where there is great hostility, may we continue to see you move. I just pray that you would use us for your glory and your honor to build your kingdom and to see lives change. Help us to be uh, careful to love those around us and to represent you well wherever we go. I pray that you be with our Noah's Window family, each and every one and each and every family that's represented, that you bless them today work in their lives. May they feel and know your presence. May they see you work. And I just pray that you would uh, provide whatever is needed and that you'd guide them through this day and bless them. We'll be careful to give you the praise. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary Alice. Thank you for joining us in Noah's Wind, the first Easter service tonight, 630. We're looking forward That's to right. that. Um, and I pray that you'll be at, at at least one of them um, yes. throughout this weekend because they're going to be very, very special services. We're going to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The message is called the authentic resurrection. It's going to be a great time. Yes, it is. And just as a reminder, tonight's the first service. Tomorrow night is another service at 630, mm -hmm. and they're the same. So there's the not same. a different service that's on right. Friday. It's all going to be the same. So if you can't make it tonight, but you can make it tomorrow night, that's another great and, opportunity. And I want you to know if you do come tonight or tomorrow night, or one of the three services on Saturday, they're gonna be identical to the ones that we yes. have on Sunday. So, yes. you know, they're all the same. We would just love to have you come, but along with that, would you invite somebody yes. to join you? It might just change their lives. That's right. God's gonna be at work in that place and we're looking forward to it. That's right. Well, God bless. Thanks for joining us on Noah's Window and we'll see you tomorrow. Yes, we love you guys. We'll see you soon. God bless.